Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today for another installment of Slab and Gab here on the channel where we take a look at a small number of graded cards from my collection and chat about them a little bit. And as you can tell by the Pierre Turgeon rookie up in the background and the title of the video, I'm going to do yet another and the last for now installment on the 88-89 Topps hockey set. I have mentioned this a couple of times, but um, I have this set in a binder. I, I collected all the 80s Topps hockey sets kind of early in my return to collecting as an adult, but I've been re-enjoying it, uh, getting the Hall of Famers from the release in PSA 9 slabs, where I've been able to track them down. And uh, the reason Turgeon is up in the background instead of being uh, a focus of today's video is he's not in the Hall of Fame. Um, but I picked that one up anyway. Um, not really strictly sticking to Hall of Famers in that case, but the reason being, I was actively collecting cards in the early 90s, and we didn't know at that point, you know, which of the active players other than Gretzky and, you know, a couple of other obvious ones were going to be in the Hall of Fame. And there was a, a period there where it looked like Terjan was headed there. And in fact, at the end of the day, he had a, a really amazing career, and he's one of the best players who is not yet enshrined in the Hall of Fame at well over 500 goals and over 1,300 career points. So that rookie card was a big card back in the day to me. And even if it isn't anymore these days or as much, I still enjoy it because of the memories that it evokes. And uh, thus, I have it in my 88 Tops Hockey Slab collection. I think he's the only non-Hall of Famer that I have, but figured he'd be up in the background. And uh, we're going to start with one of my absolute favorite cards from the entire set. Um, this is the first card in the checklist, and I just love the photograph. So it's Mario Lemieux, Le Magnifique, and uh, I think what's always done it for me with this card is it's just very recognizable because of the mustard yellow helmet as Mario leans in here to take a face off. Um, it's just, you know, we all have those cards, I think, from our youth, or at least most collectors that I talk to, that they just... They're imprinted in their mind for some reason. Um, again, it could be a variety of reasons. For me, this 88 Mario Lemieux is one of those cards. Um, I did have a copy of that, which I still have, uh, raw as a kid, and it was like one of my big hockey cards in my little shoebox of top-loaded cards, and uh, so I think that's a big part of it. Um, but I love the image. I love the logo. I love the yellow thumbtack matching the yellow helmet. Um, it's it's just gorgeous. So very happy to have uh, the first card in the set in this little collection. And then uh, in the last video, I showed off the Wayne Gretzky, which I do have, where he's uh, infamously been traded to the Los Angeles Kings and is holding the Kings sweater at the press conference. In today's video, we're going to look at two of his teammates who were left behind in Edmonton. We have uh, his wingman first, Yari Curry, who gets... You know, less hobby love and respect than he should. Uh, I think he, you know, unfairly... There's obviously some truth to the fact that playing as a line mate of Wayne Gretzky is going to benefit you uh, as the years roll on in the stats column. But at the same time, you need to be an incredibly talented player to play on the wing with Wayne Gretzky and be on a level where you can make plays with him and, uh, you know, skate with a guy like that and keep up with him. And so I think... Curry is an undersung, uh, undersung player. Um, you know, Leon Dreisaitl might be similar in today's NHL, uh, but just happy to have this one. He's uh, an all-time great in my mind, and that's a nice one there. And then uh, probably the other best Euler not named Gretzky from that dynasty, and I would even put him ahead of Curry, as I think most people would, Mark Messier. Really nice shot here. Um, some of these, there aren't a lot of action photos in uh, 1988 tops, really in the 80s a lot uh, in general. Um, and so while this is kind of on the border as far as being an action photo, he is at least leaning in against an opponent who's in frame, uh, which is uncommon for this set. And again, I like that the blue thumbtack um, kind of matches the Oilers a little bit, uh, which is not necessarily the case with every card in the set. They, they did not color match the thumbtacks by design or anything like that, but it just so happens to look pretty nice on both the Curry and the Messier cards. Um, so there are two of the better known Hall of Fame Oilers from back in the day, and apologies for the, 
the glare there on that curry. Uh, two more here, and then we'll call it quits just for today. One of the uh, other greats of the 80s and 90s and one of the best leaders of all time, and a guy who's gone on to have a really good career actually in executive management in the NHL, Stevie Y. So pretty nice one here. This is only this is like a fifth year card or something, so it's not significant in that sense, but another Hall of Famer that I needed. I think he's actually the last one on the checklist that Card number 196, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's only a 198-card set. And uh, very similar to the Lemieux here. If you put these side by side, it's almost like they're leaning in uh, to have a face-off against each other. You could be convinced of that, right? Um, so I always thought that was kind of cool about those two cards. In fact, we'll move, uh, at the risk of knocking this entire display over, we'll move uh, Eiserman here into that slot. And that way it'll kind of look like those guys are about to... Drop the puck here. Um, and then uh, last but not least, probably the single most significant card in the release, the Brett Hull rookie card. I have this one, uh, fortunately, in a Mint 9 as well. Um, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing rookie card. I mean, he's airbrushed, I'm pretty sure, from being in a Calgary sweater earlier in the 80s into this, you know, blues jersey. But... You know, it's not the finest work. They could have at least tried to get a hint of a logo or something down here. It's just, um, it, it's a pretty boring hockey card. It's just, uh, you know, you get to see the uh, hull flow there with no helmet on. So, you know, obviously his dad was the Golden Jet. So I guess in that sense, you know, seeing his blonde hair is meaningful. But uh, yeah, not, if you're going to rank the cards, rookie cards of the, you know, 80s in hockey, based purely on aesthetics. This one's going to be pretty far towards the bottom of the list. However, it's an important card just because of how completely dominating Hull was. And, uh, you know, you could argue that Bobby and Brett represent the best, you know, father-son trio in the history of hockey. You know, certainly Gordy and Mark Howe are in the mix, but for my money, um, the, the Hulls are the best father-son tandem in the history of the game. Brett was an incredible scorer, Stanley Cup champion, um, just one of the best ever to score, honestly, at the NHL level. He was an unstoppable force for much of his career, and uh, for that reason, his rookie card is pretty essential to a well-balanced hockey card rookie collection. And so, happy to have him out of the way as far as this 88-89 pursuit goes, uh, the most notable card in the set. Uh, but to me, I love those Lemieux and Iserman face-off cards just as much. So thanks for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, small handful. I think after three installments of this, this actually brings me all the way up to date on uh, the actual collection that I've accumulated of these. Um, so by my count, I'm at like 13 of these uh, Hall of Famers in PSA 9 shown on the channel. So I think that means I have less than 10 to go. Uh, so I'll be on the hunt for those. In the future, always looking to expand the collection, and hopefully I can find some more to share with you here on the channel. But until then, uh, I thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed these, and I'll be back in the very near future with some more sports card content. Until then, stay safe and enjoy the hobby.